a promotion with the coupons that they promised. And 250 off, this is what's being sent now to people they meet in bars who allegedly are over 21, because you can't get in a bar until you're 21. And, but the promotion says, break free, rock your anthem, you know, uh, keep making noise. Everything, this appeals to teenagers. Now, over here in life, you're a child, okay? Mom and dad are pretty much making a lot of decisions for you. Over there, on that side of the stage, you're an adult. And in the teenage years, we start to cross that bridge. Be home at 8 o'clock, son. Well, okay, Mom, I'll be home at 8. Be home at 8 o'clock, son. Oh, Mom, I'll be home by 9.30. And we start to make more and more of our own decisions, uh, functioning appropriately as autonomous adults, independent from our parents. Be home at 8 o'clock, son. See you Tuesday, Mom. And that's the bridge that you cross. Now, as you cross that bridge, you are making more and more of your own decisions. And you're going to probably do things differently than your parents might want as part of your normal, appropriate way of separating from your parents and spreading your wings and flying on your own as adults. Whatever you do to express your individuality, do not use drugs. They will get you addicted and kill you and destroy your life and do not smoke because you will become addicted like that. Hear me now, hear me well. But so many teens, that's why after 19, see you Tuesday, after 19, a lot of young people do not start smoking. It's only our kids that are using it as a way to express their independence and appropriate individuality from their parents. Find more appropriate, more original ways of expressing who you are. I know what you've done. And I know what you're doing. You sell a product that contains addictive chemicals. So your customers stand little or no chance of ever being able to stop using it. Slowly, over time, it kills one third of them. To replace those dead customers, you tried to market your product to kids as young as 13. The fact is, you get 89% of your new business it's from teens. I've seen the proof. It's in your own words, on your own letterhead. Stamp top secret. You screwed up when you tried to hide the documents. And now they're on the web. They're on the web. I lost my grandfather. My grandmother was manipulated by your lies for years. My grandfather died because of your product. Was the money you made worth it? You've gotten rich. Selling a product that kills over 1,200 people a day. Every day. So while you're lounging around your comfortable house, watching this message, look into my eyes. I know what you did. And I know what you're doing. And that's, that's why, why I got, got involved. involved. And I won't stop until everyone else knows what you're doing, too. And if you Google SWAT, you probably could find out about it and start a club here in the school uh, at no cost. They were using images of cowboys, rugged masculine men, uh, images of freedom, galloping horses. There is no freedom in the slavery to nicotine addiction. Images of rugged guys, guys you might want to grow to be like, emulate, uh, especially those of you who don't have a father in the house. Vulnerable. They knew what they were doing, targeting our kids. I'm angry about it. They put images of cowboys around a campfire, real friends together. The truth is, if you smoke, your friend is probably, you're going to have to go away from him because your friend doesn't want to be around your cigarette smoke. People don't want to be around it. But they lied, and they said, oh, you could have your buddies and friendship with smoking. And it just wasn't true. We've got 28 states that have banned smoking from all bars and all restaurants. 28 states. 27 of them did it in the last 10 years alone. And soon, we will have smoke-free bars and restaurants throughout the entire state of Missouri. As I speak today, 30, 30 to 31% of the Missouri population is covered by 100% smoking bans. Uh, whether in bars or restaurants or the workplace, those laws are coming here and they will, it's just an idea whose time has come. And secondhand smoke kills. Now, if the ads told the truth about Marlboro Country, there it is. Think, use your critical thinking skills. What's that a picture of? Is that a picture of a bunch of smokers outside in the office in the cold, huddled, smoking, getting their fix of nicotine. Why are they outside? Well, they can't smoke in the building. 
Why can't they smoke in the building? Well, hmm, because secondhand smoke causes lung cancer and heart disease. A quick show of hands, how many of you have a parent uh, who smokes, but when they smoke, if they feel like it, you know, they don't go outside, they just smoke in the house. How many of you have parents who smoke like in the house whenever they feel like it? Okay, thank you. Hands down. How many of you have a parent who smokes, but when they smoke, they will never smoke in the house, they only go outside to smoke? All right, I'd like that group to keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Those of you whose families smoke in the house, take a look and note how many other families there are where they only smoke outside the house. Take a look. Thank you, you can put your hands down. Those families, they smoke outside the house. So I'm going to teach you a quick formula because secondhand smoke hurts our kids. It aggravates asthma. It aggravates uh, bronchitis in kids. It's just a bad thing. There's no safe level of it according to the EPA. It is a poison. Now I'm going to teach you a formula because I want you to learn rather than calling somebody a fool, which is totally ineffective as a way of communicating, you call me a fool. See, I put this up because I don't like it. You called me a fool. You know, you call me a fool. I, you're an ineffective communicator because I am going to turn my back and tune out and walk away. You called me a fool. I'm done. I'm out of here. Bye bye. See you later. If you want to connect with me, start with an honest compliment. If they don't give a lot of compliments in your family, that's fine. But learn another language, another family language where they do give praise and compliments because it can be a very powerful motivator of other people. It'll help other people feel good about themselves and listen to you. So, Dad, I like your shirt. Huh? <laughs> what? I like your shirt. You like my shirt? Well, okay. Do not say but. I like your shirt, but... Then you just gave with one hand, you took back with the other hand. I like your shirt and, core of the lesson, I take away words, I feel. Well, you've got six choices, primary colors of our hearts. We have anger, we have sadness, we have joy, we have love, we have fear, and we have shame. How do you feel when you see your parents smoking in the house or smoking? Deliver your feelings. I feel a little angry with you, Dad. I feel a little sad. I feel a little afraid for my health and for yours. And then your limit, I want you to stop or I want you to smoke outside. And then another compliment. And I love you so much. The time you took me fishing at the river, I'll remember it my whole life. The time you spend with me, it means the world to me. I look up to you, I adore you, and I need you here for me. Compliments are powerful ways of connecting with other people as long as they're honest and you will be heard. But if you call me a fool or a name, you won't be heard and people will tune out. And don't nag your parents if they smoke, by the way, because you are a yucky, obnoxious nag if your parents smokes. Do not nag them to quit. When are you gonna quit smoking? When are you gonna quit smoking? You're a nag. You get three times a year using that formula. Compliment and I feel whatever you're feeling when, the, when you smoke and I want you to stop your limit, and I love you, and the time you took me to the river was great, whatever. Use that formula three times a year to ask them to stop. But if they're smoking in the house, you can be a nag every day, because that is your business. Because secondhand smoke hurts you, and you can be a pest about secondhand smoke in the house. And hopefully they'll go outside. There's all these other families at school where they smoke outside. I saw it today. You know? But be loving when you tell them that. Otherwise, you're a puke, and you're an up yucky, obnoxious nag, and you won't be heard. Be loving with compliments. Joe Camel, the real Joe Camel, he's dying. There he is, with his chemo bag in the hallway at the hospital, over at Cox Health that brought me here today. And it's sad. And finally, there he goes. Because every day, 3,200 people are quitting, another 1,200 dying, they're losing, what, 3,200 a day, 3,400, no, 4,400. They gotta replace them, the people who die, and the people who quit every day. They need, them, they need those customers back. 
So they need replacements. They're mannequins, folks. Tobacco companies sell a product that kills their customers. But without their customers, they go out of business. So every day they need to attract what one tobacco exec called, quote, replacement smokers. My dad died from emphysema from smoking six years ago. I haven't met his replacement yet. I haven't met his replacement yet. So don't be a replacement smoker. Now they began marketing chewing tobacco not so long ago, and chewing tobacco was unheard of. A few old men were chewing, but they got, uh, they started a lot of kids got started on cherry scoli. It didn't have a strong nicotine bite. It had cherry flavoring, candy flavoring, which appeals to who? Kids. Kids. Thank you. And they didn't know that it was as, as addicting as cigarettes or smoking, as addictive as heroin or cocaine as addicting. And then pretty soon, after Skoll, uh, you started, now they've got pouches, so they're switching their marketing from the raw tobacco to tobacco in a paper pouch. And it's just as addicting and causes mouth cancer and gum cancer and so on. They got candy flavorings that they added. Now those candy flavorings are gone. They were caused, the FDA, we got FDA regulation and. 2009, I believe, and now they've said no more candy flavorings. But they know that Copenhagen has, look at where the tobacco was, <laughs> somebody with mouth cancer. And they know that Copenhagen has more nicotine, and soon you're going to need more nicotine because you're addicted. So the ad actually said, sooner or later, it's Copenhagen. Now, betrayal, baseball players idolized by our young boys who were seen with wads of chew in their dip on the baseball field. Some of them took a lot of money from the chewing tobacco companies and our kids idolized them. They knew exactly what they were doing and it was a betrayal of our kids for, by these celebrities and by the companies that paid them behind the scenes. Even the coach. That's what happens. Gruen von Behrens. Multiple surgeries on his jaw. Look at him. There's another one. Thank you. Yeah. Can't look at it too long. It's too gross. Okay, there's another guy. Rick Bender. And he had multiple surgeries, removing more and more of his jaw because he got cancer in his jaw from chewing tobacco. Now they got these snooze. And uh, it's pretty insidious what they've done. Can you snooze while flirting? They're targeting kids and young, well, young people anyway. With FDA regulation on the right, without the FDA regulation we now have. I want to tell you a quick story. Not so quick. Ancient times, they had no entertainment, no movies, no books. They would tell stories. So we are leaving our time now. We're going back in time to a time before this time, to the 1970s, moving in in a small town in Oklahoma. We come in on a boy named Sean Marcy. Sean took his little sister, who idolized him, to the lake one day, and she fell through the ice. Well, he ran, and he got her a rope, and he, he hauled her to safety, and he saved her life. He discovered that day, often when you do someone a favor, by the way, you, you get 10 times back what you gave. He discovered he could run like the wind. 